Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Kim, a fairly average mum, and today I thought I'd film another get ready with me story time. So let's get cracking. Hiya, I hope you're all okay. Right, I've been trying to resurrect my face and my hair. My hair really desperately needs dyeing, absolutely desperately needs dyeing. Um, and on Thursday, I break up for two weeks um, and a bit, right? So I'm super excited. So I'm going to have time to go get my hair did and all sorts of stuff. I'm also full of cold, so I've got the back end of what, what has been quite a bad virus. So first day, I lost my voice. Um, and so I've had, I thought it was laryngitis. I'm not convinced I had the COVID in all honesty. Yeah, I don't have any tests, but, um, and I haven't lost my sense of taste or smell, um, but I've had a real, I sat on my chest for ages at work this week and what have you, cough, cough, coughing. All the babies were cough, cough, coughing as well. They've all got the same virus. Um, yeah, it's been it's been not very nice. So um, my skin's in shocking condition because um, I've just been so poorly. So anyway, this morning I have slapped on. Um, I got a shower and did all that malarkey, and then I slapped on a load of moisturiser and some under eye stuff, um, and then I've put my foundation on. But that is all I have done, and sprayed my hair with some of that L'Oreal colour thing. Because if you saw underneath. It's just about three inches of grey. Right, okay. So anyway, <laughs> we're rolling what we've got. Like I always say, making the best of what we've got. My nose keeps running. And that's another thing. Might have to go find myself a tissue in a bit. But anyway, right. So I've got myself all this makeup stuff. Then the other week, I filmed a part one of this, which is telling you about all the crazy jobs I've done in my life and some funny stories from them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stick some makeup on and tell you some more funny stories. Well, they might be funny, they might not be, you know what I mean? But some stories from when I were up at work in different jobs. I'm still at work, still work full time. Um, but yeah, at least now I like my job, you know. So, I mean, I've liked some jobs in the past, just not all of them. I've also picked out some makeup, which is um, some of my newer sort of makeup. Um, to give it a try. At the moment, I'm using this thing, right, in the corner of my mouth because I've got, like, a cut at the corner of my mouth. So I keep having to stick a bit of this on, stop it from getting any worse, soften it up a bit, stop it from cracking. So I knew I'd find a use for this. This were out of Marks and Spencer's Beauty Advent Calendar. So, yeah, a, a factor 30 lip protection. <laughs> so, but at least I've got it for the corner of my mouth. Anyway, right, I also cannot for the life of me find my Revolution highlighter, which is one of my favourite things I got out of my Revolution Beauty Advent calendar. Can't find it for love and money. I suspect it might have sort of slid under my bed, so I might have to, like, it's down there. Might have to pull that out and see whether I can find it later. But I had a quick look round, could not see it. Okay, right here. So where are we starting with this? Let's start with a blusher. Okay, why not? It's only my face. So I'm going to use this Bella Pierre one that's got a cracked box that I got out of one of my last ever beauty subscription boxes. Okay, it's quite pretty. It's got all these peachy sort of tones. Thought I'd go for that. Might go for that colour and maybe even mix it with a bit of that colour. You know, it's a bit of blush. Give me face a bit of colour. You know, like I say, resurrect it. It's also got a mirroring lid, which is great, you know. Right, okay, so where did I leave it? I was working at the Asda. This was the last video. So while I was working at the Asda, I were also... Oh, I don't know where I got this brush from. That were out of a beauty subscription box as well. I've cleaned it, so feel able to use this. Okay, I'm just mixing these two colours. Right, oh my goodness, I can't get any colour on. They're very light. Either that or this brush is just not picking it up. Come on, you can do it. I got any on there? Watch this be a massive stripe now. No, that's all right. Okay, so after, um, while I'm working at the Asda, I was doing my nursery nursing co course. So NNEB, National Nursery Nurses Examination Board, that stands for. Okay, so we're at college and doing that. 
So when I qualified, um, it's during the time I'd um, been going and working in between times for free, like you did. You know, you was got sent on placements to different nurseries and stuff till you got your qualification. So I'd worked at like um, what used to be called a day nursery then, but it were actually like it's been turned into a family centre and uh, all sorts of stuff. I worked in schools, did all sorts of stuff. During which time I'm still working at the ASDA. I used to work at the ASDA Wednesday, Thursday, Friday evening from six o'clock till half past eight, I think. And then on a Saturday, full day on a Saturday, I used to work at the ASDA. Um, okay, so when I qualified as a nursery nurse, this is so pale, I um, applied for a job at this children's centre, which were run by social services. Well, it were joint run by social services and education, but I were employed by social services there. And the, first, and the job I applied for, because I really wanted to work at this particular children's centre, I thought I'd get loads and loads of experience there. Um, initially, it were only like part-time, it were two and a half days a week. But when I got given the job, they said, oh, people are always off. There's always going to be time to make up hours. So I actually never worked there part-time. I always, always worked full-time. Right, next up, I'm going to put on some of this highlighter. I don't know what order I'm doing these in. I'm making it up as I go along, right? So you'll have probably seen this highlighter before because I really like it. And I wanted to use the Revolution one, but I can't even find it now. Right, okay. So, and I'm using the same brush. Why not? Okay. So, I always work full-time at this place. Um, and then eventually, the other half of my job share um, left. And they just offered me the other half. So, I just became permanent full-time. You know, didn't have to sort of make up my hours or anything. Um, I just became permanent full-time. And it was a really odd place to work, right? So, the area that this particular um, children's centre were in, were not a well-off area, it were a very poor area. In fact, it's not, um, I think most people who live there, live there through necessity rather than choice, do you know what I mean? Um, so, this ain't going on either. I think it's this brush, that's where I'm blaming. Right, let's just sort of do this with it, see whether I can get some on. That don't even look like I've got any on it either. Try it again. Is any going on? Have I got any highlight on me at all? The thing itself is really quite pigmented. Well, not pigmented, shiny. But hang on a minute. Let's just put a bit of this on with my finger. And then we'll blend it out. That's better. Okay. So I think, like I say, most people live there through necessity, not through choice. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and it's a very, very... Oh, my goodness, that's too much. Uh, quite a poor area. Really, really poor. So, um, a lot of the children who came, you know, about 50% of the kids that came to that nursery came through um, education places. You know, they were it was just an education nursery. Um, about 50% that came were there through social services. So, you know, people supporting the families and things. So, there were all sorts of things happened while they were there. Okay, really, really odd things that happened. So one of the first, <laughs> one of the first things that I thought, where am I working? What well, this poor lassie came in. She got two kiddies, uh, one in our room, one in another room. Okay, because there were four rooms, I think, then um, at this nursery. And she came in this one day to drop a little boy off into our room. She said that somebody had poisoned their dogs. Right. She knew somebody had poisoned them because both dogs had actually died, right? They'd got really ill really quickly and died. Okay. The following week, she turns up on the Monday telling us that her house has been robbed. So, these people, right, this is what the police told her. These people have basically poisoned her dogs in order that they could rob her house. And this is just sort of on the lead up to Christmas as well, when they thought she would have Christmas presents in her house, right? And she were convinced she knew who it was that had done it as well. Somebody else living on that estate had done it. And I thought, where am I working? 
That to me seems so bizarre. You bear in mind that we're only like 19. Right, that to me seemed so bizarre that somebody had gone to that trouble to rob an house, right, that they poisoned the dogs. Then we're not talking about mansions in the countryside. We're talking about little council houses, you know. They'd gone to the trouble and the awful um, deed of poisoning this woman's dogs in order that they can burgle her house. So I so fast realised that where we're working might not be something that um, was similar to anything of my experience. Right, next up, I'm going to try draw my eyebrows on with this NYX pencil, which I love. Once I get paid, I'm going to buy myself another one of these, just so I've got a standby, because I'm petrified it runs out, okay? And I have no eyebrows, okie dokie. So I'm just going to try draw these on. It's my favourite one. I think it's in like a dark brown colour. It's in ash brown. Okay, right. Yeah, we're pretty bad working there. I mean, it were, you know, there were some, some bizarre things happened. This one particular time, because I worked shifts, so I didn't work like school type um, times or holidays. We were open from like half seven in the morning till half six at night. So I used to work shifts over those days and I got uh, 28 days holiday a year. So not school holidays, you know. Um, I did just get like the um, 28 days. So I needed to go to the dentist this one particular day. So I booked to go into work, but then leave at sort of, it would just be for lunchtime, it might have been about 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so I, I did my shift, you know, the bit of time that was supposed to be there, and I set off walking up through the estate to where the bus stop was. So the first thing I seen, right, as I'm walking up through this estate, the first thing I seen were two guys punching each other on one street corner, right? literally punching each other on a street corner. And police, I could hear police in distance being called and people were screaming. They were what I took to be wives or girlfriends screaming and stuff. They're having a pitch battle on a corner. And then I walk a bit further up the estate and there's these dogs attacking one another, both on leads, right? So there were people walking these dogs weren't pulling them away. The dogs were actually going for each other and the people were standing there letting them. I'm going to have to take my cardio off. I'm boiling under this. Right, okay. So that was the second thing I seen. This is all at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I get a bit further up and I'm about to round the corner off the estate. And all of a sudden, a, a house brick, like a big red house brick, gets thrown through a living room window. From the inside out, right, um, you can't make it up. From the inside of this house, this house brick comes through into the front garden, lands on the grass. I thought, honestly, I've never seen it like it in my life. And I thought, I'm never going to get up out of this estate in one piece. Because normally when I arrived, it was crackered on. And when I left, it was sort of late on. So I wasn't used to seeing all this stuff. When I got to the dentist and I was telling the dentist about it, he was laughing his head off because he couldn't believe it. And I said, I'm literally not making it up. This is what I've just seen. Right, okay. So it was like another side of life. Sometimes we used to have lockdowns there as well. Like somebody's dad had been let out of prison or something and they were after coming and taking kids. So the whole like, setting had been a lockdown. Nobody would be allowed near windows or anything like that. It were crackers. I only stuck it out for a year there. One year, right? And then I found a job working at another nursery because I just couldn't stand it. And what one of the um, the pivotal moments that made my mind up, I'm getting out of here, what this particular day, right? This woman comes in with a little boy. And um, we used to do what used to be called workshop approach, Right? which is now how most nurseries are set up. But you've got to bear in mind in the 70s, nurseries that were set up were a bit like reception classes. And they used to set the kids down and get them to do activities, right? Nurseries age kids, it's quite hard to get them to do that. So a workshop approach started in sort of late 70s, early 80s. And basically it had the nursery set up a bit like nurseries are set up now, right? Where... There's loads and loads of stuff available for the kids and they just work their way around 
looking at as stuff, bringing stuff out that they want to bring out. But it were like a new and revolutionary idea back in the early 80s, you know, this sort of way of having nursery schools. Oh, what have I just done to my eyebrow there? All right, so, um, yeah. So the, in one area where all the arts and crafts area were, was called the workshop, okay. So they used to have round-ended scissors and all sorts of stuff there for these kiddies. I mean, the room that I were in were three to five-year-olds, you know, once they got to the point when they went on to school, that's when they left this room. So this one particular day, unbeknownst to anybody in the room, this little boy goes and climbs under a table with a pair of round end scissors and hacked his hair off. And we only realised that he'd done this when we found clumps of hair on the floor. Seeing him under this table, because it had like a plastic sheet over to protect the table, he'd got right underneath it and taken chunks of his hair off, right? So we get him out, we're like mortified. I thought, oh my goodness, we're going to have to tell his mum. Anyway, right, what am I putting on next? What am I putting on next? Okay, I'm going to use this, which is a Revolution eye palette, right, that I got in my Revolution Beauty Advent Calendar. It's really pretty, re really neutral. I was slightly, like, down on it when I first got it because there's not one pop of colour. But now I've realised it, it probably is the most usable palette that's ever been invented. Okay, so I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for these two colours that I haven't tried before so I'm going to go for that one yeah that one and then I might go over my lid with something a bit more sparkly okay and I've just got some random brushes as per usual right just like a couple of random brushes that I've no idea where I got them from I think that one's a savers brush but I don't know where that one's from okay so anyway this mum comes to pick the kid up and he's honestly chunks out of his hair she just laughed. She absolutely just laughed, right? So, all kids go home, he's gone home. And the following day, I go in. I'm his key worker. But that don't mean to say that it's just you responsible for him. It's just you keep the files on the kid. That's it. Everybody's responsible for every child in the nursery. Okay, I'm going to use the mirror in this now. Right, so we'll start with this light colour and see what I can do with it. Wow, it's quite pigment. I mean, quite got quite a lot on my brush okay it's not that pigmented okay we might get more on my brush okay following morning dad rocks up clearly dad was not so happy about this the kid had been dropped off by mum early doors and it adds like a buzz cut over his hair to get rid of all these chunks that had come out and stuff but she was absolutely right as a bobbin right no no bother at all Dad comes in, right, a little bit later, sees me, knows I'm key worker, and came straight at me, literally got me by my throat and walled me up, right? Now, you bear in mind, sort of in this centre, we had uh, panic buttons all around the place, panic buttons, because, you know, things like this, it, it wasn't the first time this had ever happened, right? It was the first time it had ever happened to me, but it was not the first time this had ever happened. So I'm walled up against this wall. No other staff in, um, in vision at all. And I know the panic button's up here, and I'm desperately trying to press this panic button. Maybe 19, 18, 19, and I'm desperately trying to hit this panic button. Could I reach it? Could I? Because I... All of a sudden, the room leader walks in the room and clocks this guy, presses the panic button, um, and then a load of other people came running in and sort of negotiated him off my neck and out of the setting. And after that, he wasn't allowed in the setting, you know what I mean? But the kids still were there, you know, I was frantic. Honestly, I thought nobody's ever coming in. You know, those maybe few seconds that he's got me around my neck waiting to see somebody else I were panic stricken absolutely panic stricken they felt like they lasted forever so that sort of precipitated me applying for other jobs because I thought yeah my life's worth more than this do you know what I mean I'm only supposed to be looking after Ben's I'm not really supposed to be physically assaulted while I'm there and no happened right he got bad but no happened nobody took any statements or all like that just because it was so a matter of everyday sort of practice that these sort of things would happen that nobody even bothered to do that 
remember when I was leaving, they did like, you know, like sometimes um, in places, they ask you for feedback on you being there. And when I got another job and just as I were about to leave and I said, I, li I literally don't think you should be having 18 and 19 year olds working here. I don't, right? It's just too traumatic. In my key group, I had 10 children, one with dyspraxic, um, one had autism, um, and three needed proper like family support. I won't go into details, but needed family support. And five others were just education places. I had 10 key children who had that whole range of issues and I were 18, 19 years old. It was too much. It was too much for any one person, let alone a young lass. So I went to work at, um, at a school, which had the advantage that I got school holidays as well. Right, okay. And I got nearly as much money for doing it. But it went in a purpose built. Right, I'm just going to move on to this. So I'm going to use this colour here and try and darken up in my crease. I'll let to blend it out with my clean brush in a bit. Right, because I'm just too focused on telling you my tales. Right, okay, let's go with this. Okie dokie. So I uh, went to work at this uh, nursery, which had a purpose built. It would have been purpose built attached to a school that had been uh, there for donkey's ages. And so had the head teacher. She was due for retirement, really. And I mean, she'd been head teaching or teaching since they used to whip kids, you know, in schools. So, and I don't, I think she thought it was like a bad thing that they weren't allowed to anymore. You know, she were that kind of person. I think she would have been going around walloping any number of kids had she been allowed to. But they'd taken that offer, you know, like, <laughs> you could see she were mortified about it. You know, she got snarled at everybody. Like, she just wanted to go around walloping all these, like, primary school kids. Shockingly bad. I absolutely hated her with a passion. I hated her. Now, she didn't want that nursery there at all, right? She were old school. And old school in the 1980s, you know. So, real old school. So, she didn't want the nursery to be built, but the education authority had said it had to be. So, she were kind of hoping that it would be run in the way that nurseries had been run, sort of when nurseries used to be like primary schools, you know, where kids would be sat down. She really did not want all these kids just around the place, just being allowed to pull out toys and things. She And she made it very clear to us, there were me and a teacher who worked there, she made it incredibly clear to us that she hated the fact we were there. She would never speak to me, never speak to me. She hardly ever spoke to the teacher who were there, that she certainly was not going to speak to a nursery nurse who was so much below her. You know what I mean, right? She absolutely hated the nursery, hated um, the ethos of the nursery, and particularly hated me. Particularly hated me, right? I don't know what it was that I did to cause so much hatred, but I, and I don't even care that she absolutely could not stand me, right? When she finally got another nursery nurse working in the school, um, this nursery nurse who worked in the school, in order that she wasn't similarly hated, just fit in she just went to doing everything that everybody else in the school did which were not very good practice but i mean it was survival you know what i mean she had to work near to this one whereas i were like cordoned off in a nursery only time i ever seen her were if she came into the staff room when i were on my lunch um and i mean i were there 15 minutes i'd slurp my coffee and i'd go straight back to the nursery i didn't want to be around her at all not at all right um, but yeah, she um, she would give you a Christmas present every year, right? And these Christmas presents became like a joke, right? Because how do you give a Christmas present to somebody to prove how little you care about them? Well, she seemed to have made it in art form. Do you know what I mean, <laughs> right? She, I bet she spent all year thinking, what can I give them? Give, I mean, this were all the staff. I and mean, everybody sort of, when they got a Christmas present, were just like, what? Right. She seemed to have decided that she was just going to buy Christmas presents that proved to people how little she liked him. So I'll give you an example. One year, she gave me a China bell, right? I've no idea. You're going to try to read something into that, I know. Well, believe me, I have had 
30 odd years to think about it. There's no reading anything into it. And if there is, it's nothing good. It was just that she wanted to give me something that showed her utter contempt for me. And it was this little china bell, not a pretty one or anything, that were clearly off a market, right? That were the cheapest thing you could possibly buy. I suspect at the, at the time, it probably cost five or 10 pence, right? It came in a box, looked mass produced, really super, I sound like really ungrateful, don't I? The point of this story is they were designed to make you feel like you were worthless. I'll give you another example. A packet of um, handkerchiefs with an initial on. That wasn't yours. Right. So, like, you'd get um, a pack that would have, like, two um, fabric handkerchiefs in with an initial on that was absolutely not your initial okay right just shockingly bad <laughs> they were absolutely crazy so this is when i stopped going to christmas works christmas do's i hate going to works christmas do's i have spent a lifetime avoiding him because when i were at this particular place right it were almost like you had to go they used to make you feel shocking if you didn't go you know i mean it what your name would be mud and mine were already bad enough there um so you'd have to go to these works Christmas do's and they'd be out in the back of beyond and there'd be nobody else there, just everybody from that, that school um, and nobody spoke to me or the nursery teacher at the best of times. They could just bear her, but they hated me. So, um, yeah, so we'd rock up at these places and it'd be like one long table. It were like an Adams family gathering. It were awful, really, really awful. So me and the nursery teacher used to plan to sit next to each other. Okay, right, next up. I'm gonna, what colour am I gonna put on my eyelid? I'm gonna go for that colour there. Right, so I've got a bit of shimmer in it and I'm gonna put it on my eyelid, okay. I'm gonna put it on my finger so I can actually get some, you know, pack it on a bit. Right, so one example of this works Christmas do. We get there and me and this lass, this woman, who was older than me, but, um, you know, who's a teacher, sit next to each other. Problem is, we're not in control of who sits across the table. And the head teacher sat directly opposite me. Okay. So me and this teacher, who I work with in the nursery, decide wine. Okay, right, <laughs> we'll get wine. So she bought a bottle and I bought a bottle. And we were sharing these uh, two bottles of wine. Okay getting hammered okie dokie in order to cope with it as this head teacher passes out insults around the table to any number of people it wasn't just us insults to any number of people um and stared daggers at me the whole blinking time but me and my pal were sat there like we sort of turned with chairs away and we're chatting away from her anyway then the food comes okay and the food what awful absolutely awful for a start off there were no that were like plant-based or anything like that so i'd ordered this salad um because everybody else were having like a christmas dinner um and i knew that were coming on the plate already set up do you know what i mean whereas the salad i thought whatever like the meaty thing is i'll be able to shove to one side and not make a scene because it wasn't so popular then to sort of be veggie and at the time i were only veggie i wasn't like um plant-based i were just veggie and I, but i didn't want to make a scene didn't want to you know cause any trouble so i get this salad and it came and it was massive absolutely massive theirs were all like a christmas dinner on a plate and were piled high so i'm trying to plow my way through this thing trying to make a dent in it do you know what i mean and there was so much of it and it was so bland and had no sauce on it, no dressing, no nothing. It were awful, absolutely awful. So I've been eating what amounted to, you know, like an entire garden's worth of salad. And I pushed my plate away as if like, yeah, I can't do it anymore. I literally cannot eat any, anything. So the woman, the head teacher, waits for these plates to be cleared, beckons me across the table so i lean forward to see what she's after and she said maybe if you didn't drink so much you'd be able to eat a bit more i was just sat there looking at her i thought 
kill me now, right? Honestly, I thought she's been planning that. She would, she had been planning that from the minute I had finished my meal. She'd planned to say that to me. And this is why ne I never go to work's Christmas dues. Even if I like the people, there's guaranteed somebody will say something like that to either you or somebody else at a work's Christmas do. So I avoid them like the plague. Can't bear them. Don't want to be at them. No, thank you very much. Okay. All right. What am I on now? What am I doing? Okay. I've got mascara to put on, but I've got makeup all over my hands. I'll wash them later. Okay. Is that even blended? That looks like I've got like a really dark bit there though. Hang on. Let's just rub it. They're not the most exciting colours, but they're a nice day look with a bit of a difference, you know. Right, okay, I've got a mascara that I got in my um, Marks and Spencer's Beauty Advent Calendar. It's a Clinique one. So, and I've never ever tried a Clinique mascara, so I'm going to give it a go. Because my other ones are getting a bit dried up, in all honesty. So, let's give this a go anyway. Right, oh, it looks quite pretty. Look at that. Let's hope it goes on really nice. I've not unscrewed it yet because I didn't want to start it before um, I was going to use it. That's really nice brush and all. So I'll briefly, while I'm putting this on, tell you about another job that I had, right? Because I've got loads more stories about nurse and nursing. Absolutely stacks. But um, I'll come back to them in part three, maybe. It's right, okay. But I wanted to tell you about this sandwich shop that I worked in. Oh, that's my daughter. All right. Thank you, Neve. Okay, okay. Um, it's my daughter being lovely to me. Um, anyway, right. So, I um, I worked at this sandwich shop. After I left my husband, um, I was going to do my degree. Okay. Um, so I had to get a job. Obviously, I had to get a job. So there were a job. There were a, a sandwich shop that were just literally below my window. I lived in like a masonette in a little block of flats. And throughout my bay window down were a parade of shops. And one of these shops um, were a sandwich shop. So this one day when I'm coming home, I've been dropped my kids off at school, right? I see in window, it says that they want somebody half past nine till two o'clock, Monday to Friday. No, yeah, half nine till half two, that's right, Monday to Friday which were perfect for fitting in around my kids. Absolutely perfect. It meant I could drop the kids off at, at school, come down, work in the sandwich shop, you know what I mean? And then go pick my kids up. And this is before I were back on my degree. So perfect, perfect timing in this shop. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. I worked for this lassie called Sue. Um, and she worked dry, sense of humour, but hilarious, right? She were also really really thorough she'd built up this business her and her partner had built up this business and we used to get orders in from all around the area i mean massive orders massive orders so i would put on cold sandwiches okay for most of the time that i were there but um when i first got there in the morning i used to work in the back doing hot sandwiches with them and then i'd move to the front of the shop and have to do cold sandwiches and they used to have all these different they must have had 40 or 50 different cold sandwiches that they sold that she'd come up with all these different ones. Like one of them, for example, um, which were like a Christmassy one, um, were tur sliced turkey with stuffing and cranberry sauce. Okay. And then she'd do other ones, you know what I mean? Cheese savouries and all that kind of thing. Chicken tikka, prawn. And then you could have salad with anything as well. But there were loads. I can't even remember all the different flavours. There were just so many different sandwiches. And that's not including the hot sandwiches either, right? Okay. But once she got the hang of doing these sandwiches, it were fine. I used to be like really quick at them. Um, slice up all the salad in between times, in between sandwiches. And she used to write what the sandwich were on the paper bag. And I'd just have a stack of them and work my way through them. Do you know what I mean? And... The shop were always packed at the front, absolutely packed, and I were out front as well. Um, absolutely packed with people. I mean, it were a really good little business that she did it really well, her and her partner did it so well. Everything were fresh every day, it were really good, you know what I mean? It had a really good reputation. <laughs> but there were, you know, you used to get customers that used to come in and complain about stuff. Like one time somebody came in, right, because we used to also sell jacket potatoes, right? Okay. 
Um, and this one particular day, every potato that had come, what must have been the size of my head, it were massive, right? These potatoes wouldn't show up in the bag. Well, like this big. So the box wouldn't even hold them. So what they decided to do were cook them, slice them, and just sell half a jacket potato of these massive ones. Um, because you were getting more in the half a jacket potato than you were getting in a full one, you know, a full normal size one. But um, this woman came back in and complained. She said, it's not a jacket potato, it's half a jacket potato. And Sue looks at her and went, yes. And she said, I want an old jacket potato. Right, and she said, do you realise how big an old jacket potato is when it's that big? It won't go in your box. This woman absolutely stomped and shouted for ages that she was being ripped off. She'd got half a jacket potato, not an old one and stuff. All these guys who had been coming in, you know, on the dinners and stuff, working, grafting jobs, they weren't complaining that they'd got half a jacket potato because anybody looking at it could see how massive it was, right? But she were complaining. She wanted the whole thing, right? I, honestly, at the finish, Sue said to her, well, you've eaten half of it anyway, there's not what I can do about it. And off she went, right? But swearing and shouting and carrying on. And then this other day, this one woman came in and she'd bought a hot sandwich. Okay, right, I'm gonna try and put my lippy on. Now I've got this uh, Revolution lip pencil, then a Revolution um, lippy, which are the closest to matching that I got out of my beauty advent calendar. So I'm hoping they do go together. I've blobbed this mascara everywhere, but I quite like it. You know, if I haven't blobbed it everywhere. Okay, let's try this lip liner. Okay, please let it be soft, not too hard. No, it's rock hard. Sorry, I'm concentrating on this. Not a nice lip liner. That is rock hard. It's dragging my lips everywhere. I haven't even drawn a nice line. Right, I'm giving up on that. I'm just going for my lippy. Anyway, so this woman came in and bought this hot sandwich. What colour is this? Did it even tell me? So that's all oh, right. I thought it said Gary at first. It's baby. Okay. <laughs> or Gary, whichever we're calling it. All right. I'm going to say that doesn't look like I get any Gary I know. Anyway, right. Oh, it doesn't even match. It doesn't even match. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, man on a galloping horse ain't going to notice, is it? All right. Particularly not through my window because I'm not going anywhere. Okay. All right. So I'll just put this on and I'll tell you, finish telling you my tail. Okie dokie. So that's going to have to do it for today, guys. I'll probably judge it up and get rid of some of the blobs of mascara off this eye once I've finished. But anyway, she come in, she orders this hot sandwich, right? The sandwich that she ordered was sausage and tomato, right? But it clearly said on the list of things that tomatoes were tinned tomatoes, right? Okay, so tinned tomatoes make your sandwich soggy. Okie dokie. Anybody with half a brain knows that. Okay, no matter how much you drain them, the actual tomatoes hold moisture so as soon as you bite into it cut into it it's good the moisture's gonna go everywhere so anyway this woman bought these sandwiches not just that sandwich but she walks out oh about 10 15 minutes later she's back through door with what amounted to an half eaten sandwich and says to sue who's the owner who's behind the counter this sandwich is soggy and sue went <laughs> well I mean, I would have cracked up laughing. I would. I know what I were like. I think probably making cold sandwiches at the time, I sort of looked and did laugh. Right, okay. Trying not to be seen laughing. But Sue went, yeah. Right, and she went, well, it shouldn't be soggy. She went, it's got tomato in it. Because Sue can see her own handwriting on the bag with the code that says tomatoes. Right, okay. So this woman's like, well, it shouldn't be soggy. She went first, you've eaten half of it. And second of all, it's tomato. Tin tomatoes are gonna make your sandwich soggy. She said, I want a refund. Sue said, I don't care. You're not having a refund. This is what you can do when you've got your own shop, right? You can just be as horrible as you like. But also, I sort of loved her for it because she wasn't gonna take fools gladly at all. She went, well, you're not having a refund, right? <laughs> you've eaten it. And it, it's tomato, it's going to be soggy. So this woman picks this sandwich in the bag up and lobs it towards Sue. 
It had missed Sue, right? It completely missed her. Fell on the floor next to her. She didn't break a step. Picked it up and lobbed it back at this woman and it clubbed her on her shoulder. There were tomato all up her head and everything. She didn't come back in the shop. She did not come back in the shop. She just carried on going. I said to her afterwards, I was saying to Sue, well, that were hilarious, but are you not worried you're going to get into trouble? She went, no, because she threw it first, right? She threw it first. And I thought, well, she's got a point, you know. Absolutely loved working there. Worked with some right lasses. They were so funny, so funny and so hard working. To say it were a sandwich shop, we're so busy all the time. It was busy and we were, we grafted, you know, but um, it were also hilariously good fun. So anyway, so that's the end of my part two. Um, and everything for today. If you've liked this video, please give us a like. It really helps us out. And if you like this kind of content, you might want to consider subscribing. I've left all my contact details in the description box just in case you want to contact me for any reason. But thank you very much for taking a few moments out of your day to spend with me. Bye!